I'm going to start off reading. I'm going to be reading from uh, John chapter 5. And I'm going to begin in verse 31. We're going to read a little bit. And then I'll break down a little bit um, what my message is in this, in this video. Okay. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. There is another who testifies in my favor. And I, and I know that his testimony about me is valid. You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light, and you chose for a time to enjoy his light. I have testimony weightier than that of John, for the very work that the Father has given me to do or to finish, and which I am doing, testifies that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concern, concerning me. You have never heard his voice nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you. For you do not believe the one he sent. You diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Okay. I'm going to skip down... Uh, I'm going to skip down to verse 45. But do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? Very, very powerful stuff. Very powerful stuff. Right here, Jesus is having a conversation with the Jews, with the Pharisees, right? And it was right after they tried to use the law and try to use their scriptures um, against him, the holy scriptures of the Jews, which we know and understand as the Old Testament, right? They had just uh, tried to use that against him in the matter of uh, keeping the Sabbath and certain things. And they were trying to tell him and trying to find um, reasons in the law to accuse him, to eventually have him killed which is eventually what happened but this is as their beginning to kind of build their case against them build their case against Jesus right and he is having this conversation with them and he's trying to explain to them a very important lesson but he begins by letting them know that there there is enough evidence there is enough testimony of who he is, of the claims that he was making of being the son of God. And first off, he begins with the first testimony, which is human testimony, which is the testimony that most humans uh, accept, right? When you go to court, if five people come and testify against you about a certain matter, that's pretty weighty evidence. And the more people that testify and the more... Uh, reputable their character is and the better character they have and the more trustworthy these witnesses are the the weightier the heavier the stronger their testimony against you is going to be right and so he's saying there's testimony about what i'm telling you about what i'm saying i'm not just speaking on my own and first he goes to human testimony which was somebody that the Jews at that time trusted very much, which was John the Baptist, who had just finished his ministry, who had just uh, brought about the message of repentance from sins and the baptism of water. But the Bible makes it very clear, and he made it very clear too, that his main purpose was here to make the way for Jesus, to testify of Jesus, to testify that Jesus was the, the, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Remember when Jesus came to him, to, be, to John the Baptist, to be baptized, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So Jesus was here to testify. I mean, John the Baptist was here to testify about Jesus. And since they trusted him, the Jews trusted him, right here Jesus said, You sent to John. You went to ask John about me and he testified to you about me but you didn't receive that testimony 
Then he says, but there's weightier testimony, which is the testimony of my works, my miracles. I'm raising people from the dead. I'm giving sight to the blind. I'm uh, taking people that you've known, that you've seen, couldn't walk, and I'm speaking um, a miracle over them and they're able to walk, right? He's saying that's even weightier testimony than the testimony of John. So that's when he says, but even my father testifies of me. And then he goes right at the heart of what they were trying to use against him. See, the, the thing that they were trying to use against him, which is what they held to the highest regard, was the word of God. Was the Old Testament. Was the Holy Scriptures that the Jews um, held to such a high regard, right? And he says, but even in that, God testifies of me. The, tes the Father testifies of me. And that's when he says, but do not think that I came to accuse you. See, he's basically saying, your own law that you're using to try to discredit me, to try to find me guilty, testifies of me. God spoke about me through through the prophets, through Moses, through all the writings, there's prophecies. There's shadows of things to come. And they all pointed to Jesus. And that's why he says, Moses is your accuser. Because he wrote about me. He's saying at the end of the day, what's going to accuse you, what's going to make you guilty in the eyes of God, is going to be the very same thing that you're trying to use against me, he says. But then he says something very, very important. And it was also said in the dialogue that was happening between the rich man and Lazarus. If you know the Bible and you know the story of the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus was a poor man and obviously the rich man was rich and they both died. And one goes to, to you know, what is considered like heaven and the other one goes to hell. And when the man is in hell, he's asking to be allowed to go back and warn his brothers of this place so they'll change their ways and they won't end up there. And it was said to him, they have the law and the prophets. If they don't believe them, they wouldn't even believe if a man rose from the dead and told them, right? So basically the same thing is going on here. Jesus is telling these people, you guys have the law and the prophets. You guys have the Holy Scriptures. You guys have the writings that testify of me. If your heart was in the right place, if your heart was really seeking God and seeking God's will and really wanting to do the will of God, you would know who I am. You would believe what I'm telling you. You would accept, you would receive my words. See, it's not a matter of is there enough evidence. It's not a matter of testimony. It's a matter of whether the heart is able to receive or not. And these Jews, there was nothing. That's what Jesus said. There's nothing that was going to convince them at this point that He was the Son of God, that He was who He was claiming to be because they had already hardened their hearts to that. And they had already made up their minds that there was nothing that He could do or say that was going to convince them otherwise. And so that's what he says. It, 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 but since you do not believe what Moses wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? See? Sometimes we think, and I've touched on this in other videos, but we need to understand this, that sometimes we think that if we formulate a good enough argument, right? A good enough argument for the existence of God, for the resurrection of Jesus, that we formulate a good enough argument that it's enough to convince people. But see, just because you can convince somebody intellectually doesn't mean you can penetrate the heart. We got to understand this. This is a very, very important thing. Doesn't mean you're going to be able to penetrate the heart. And we need to ask for wisdom from God. And we need to ask for understanding of when we are just uh, dealing with, with soil that it's not going to produce anything so we don't waste our time. Because there's people that are going to be like these Jews. There's not going to be no amount of evidence, no amount of testimony that is going to get them to believe in God and to yield their lives to Jesus and to trust in Jesus. And that's a very scary place to be in. 
If you're an unbeliever and you somehow happen to stumble upon this video, what we teach, what we preach, what the Bible speaks of is a lot more deeper than just intellectual knowledge. It speaks of matters of the heart. It speaks of humans not being able to receive this message no matter how much testimony and evidence there is behind it, be it, uh, be it theological, philosophical, historical, right? Um, or even through the studies of nature, scientific. There is no amount of knowledge and evidence and testimony that is going to penetrate the heart unless you humble yourself before the Lord. Unless you humble yourself and put your heart in the right place to receive. And that looks like this. It looks like coming to a place where you acknowledge your limits. Where you acknowledge that as a human being, there are limits to your understanding. There are limits to the things that you are able to know without God, without the help from God, and without the Holy Spirit of God. And that's the place where we need to get to in order to actually receive the truth. The Bible also speaks of the Jews still being uh, blinded by a veil not being able to receive and not being able to understand what should have been so plain to them because they had the scriptures that spoke of it and testified of it beforehand. But because their hearts weren't in the right place, their eyes and their minds uh, remained blinded to it. But it speaks of when their hearts become come to the right place it says that that veil is lifted and now all of a sudden they can see they can see what was so evident all along. And that's one thing that you will hear from so many Jews that come to Jesus. That they're blown away at the fact that they couldn't see it all their life as they were growing up being taught the scriptures, the Old Testament. Because it's so plain once the veil has been lifted. We need to continue to, to testify with our lives, with our words. But we need to understand this principle. And sometimes we need to pray more for a certain person than actually testify to them through words. We need to pray that God would soften their hearts, that God would bring them to a place of humility to actually be able to receive before we even start to try to pour into them. We need to ask God to give us discernment in these matters. That's all I have uh, for, for right now. I hope this video blesses you as always. I hope we come to an understanding of how blessed we are as believers and how thankful we should be that, that, that our eyes were open and that our hearts received the Lord and that we're able to understand His truth and that we're able to receive it and that we're able to walk in His ways and that we're being strengthened and encouraged more and more every day by His Spirit. I hope for myself and for you that we come to a place where we truly, truly are able to understand what's been done for us through Jesus Christ 